Stop chasing Synad, amplifier distortion. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delicello with Audioholics. I'm probably going to get some hate for doing a video like this, but I think it's an important topic to discuss. And I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. I always value measurements and audio components, but I think it's important to make people understand that just because something measures better doesn't mean it's going to correlate to a better sounding product or a better product in general. And the focus of today's video is on the distortion called sign ad. And who made this popular to his credit was Amir from Audio Science Review. He started publishing data on, on amplifiers and receivers, you know, several years now he's been doing that. And he's equated all of the distortion data into the decibel equivalent, which is called Synad. And the problem I see with that is sometimes people in general, if they look at this data, they're going to make observations and say, well, this amplifier has 90 dB Synad. That one has 95 dB, so it's a superior product. I'm going to go buy that. But there's a lot more to what constitutes good sound in an amplifier or good performance. And to sum it up into one single metric like a Synad distortion number, I think is very limiting. And it doesn't tell you much beyond academics in most cases. So I put together um, a little PowerPoint presentation I thought would be great to go over with you guys and uh, we could discuss. So stop chasing sign ed. the quest for low amplifier distortion is what I call it. So let's just define some, some math here, some basic math and basic concepts. When you're looking at a waveform that's clean, it's not distorting it's you you put in a sine wave it's going to give you a sine wave out as you see in the top blue uh, sine wave as you start overdriving an amplifier and it starts running out of voltage it starts clipping off the plus and the minus uh with respect to the rails and you start seeing it lob off the the peaks and the dips and you see on the green over here where it's clipping that's called clipping distortion so if you look at, uh, I put a little table together to equate THD plus N versus sine ed because they're basically the same thing. Sine ed is just the decibel equivalent of it. And for engineers, I guess that's important to equate things in dBs. But I think personally, as a consumer, I think hearing things in percentages kind of makes more sense to the non-techie. So personally, I prefer to show the THD plus N figures for amplifier more so than I do sign ed, but I also show both now because, you know, audio science reviews doing it. So I'd like to do as best as I can to give people apples to apples comparisons when we're each evaluating component gear. But you can see as you, um, for every time you move to the right of the decimal point, you gain 20 dB of sign ed. So if you're at 10% distortion, that's at minus 20 dB sine ad. At 1%, it's minus 40. And you see how it goes down to 0.01 is minus 80, then 0.001 is minus 100. And you start getting into the weeds. You start getting into the limit of what can be actually be measured is around 120 or so dB, just because you get into thermal noise, which will um, be higher than distortion in, in these cases. So one thing I want to point out is back in the day, in the old days, we would look at amplifiers mostly with oscilloscopes. Uh, we, you know, I didn't always have audio precisions at my disposal or you know, any type of advanced gear, but I could always tell an amplifier clipping and you could see it uh, as you see in the green. I noticed, I made the correlation when I worked in telecom um, that once you get a clipped waveform like you see in the green, you're at about uh, between minus, 20 to minus 40 dB of sine ed. So you're at anywhere from one to 10%, depending on how the amplifier clips, you know, and just the amount of clipping that's going on. So an O-scope will give you about that much dynamic range in the measurements. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. So I want to show two examples of different amplifiers that I've measured in the past. The one being the NAD M23, which is on the left. 
That's the lowest distortion amplifier I've ever measured. I actually had to redo my test fixture to make these kind of measurements, 110 dB sine ed. I think theoretical on the Purify modules, like 116 or 117. So the fact that NAD was able to productize this platform into, into its own box and get that kind of distortion performance is quite remarkable. And you can see that the amplifier just keeps a very low distortion all the way up to the knee where it goes from horizontal to vertical and it's in the weeds. I mean, this is the lowest distortion I've ever seen in an amplifier. And there's a couple of amplifiers like this on the market. I think uh, Benchmark makes an amplifier that has similarly low distortion. And then on the right side, I have a very expensive $11,000 amplifier that I reviewed and I'll link it up in the uh, description. Um, Pass Labs X350.5, that's like an $11,000 behemoth. It weighs over 100 pounds. It's got a big, well, not as big as it should be, toroid power supply, a lot of filter ca ca uh, capacitors. It's a high bias in class A. But the problem that I found with that amplifier is at low power, it sounded great. Like it was clean, it was, you know, low noise. But when I really started hitting that amp and, and just driving it hard with my old uh, super speakers I had from Status Acoustics, those dipped down to two and a half ohms or something at 60 hertz. When I started cranking up, I noticed that the Pass Labs amp went from warm to kind of a little stringent where it had like a bite to it. Not that it sounded bad in any way, but I definitely noticed a tonal shift in that amplifier more so than I've noticed in a similar amplifier I was reviewing at the time from Class A and the company class a and that amplifier had similar power ratings but its distortion profile was much more linear up until the knee whereas this past lab amp just keeps rising in distortion as you get higher in power so i'm i'm going to make the supposition and this is an educated guess it's not a definitive answer but I'm going to say, as I was driving that Pass Labs amplifier to the two, 300 watt range and the sign ad went from 86 dB down to 66 dB, I would say that played part of what I was hearing. It gave it the edge. When you started approaching those 60 dB numbers, um, that's when I think it became audible with program material. So I just wanted to throw that in there to show that. And in comparison to the NAD, I just never heard that amp sound different regardless of how much I drove it with the speaker. So it's just an interesting little side note here I wanted to show you guys. So in this case, I did a video last week that the knee, you know, amplifier should be rated at or below the knee. And it just comes back to that again. If you look in these two examples, and I've got the Marantz, I own the Marantz AV10, Amp10. You can see, <clears throat> you can see that here. But this amp, the Marantz is rated to 200 watts but you can see it's high into, it's into the clipping zone. It's into the uh, vertical part of the graph at 0.1%. I think I got a little over 200 Watts, but it maintains a high sign at of 93 dB all the way to about 120 Watts, which is where the knee is. Interestingly enough, I just looked at an old amplifier I reviewed years ago from Outlaw Audio, and this is a pretty inexpensive amp. I think now it's the 5000 X. I don't think it's the 5000 anymore. But that had a really good sign at all the way past its rated power. So that was rated at 120 watts. And it had it maintained a very, very linear response with, you know, almost up to 140 watts. And that was with five channels driven. So kudos to Peter Tribman because he conservatively rates amplifiers. And I love seeing manufacturers be more on the conservative side of the things. So you could see that this amp just, you know, for what it is, I was very surprised to get that kind of power and the fact that the manufacturer was honest about it. So what is audible? And this is, I don't think there's a clear answer. I think there's a lot of factors. I think it depends on the signal type and duration. I think it's how good your hearing is, how controlled your environment is, how revealing your equipment is. And I just want to point out that, you know, there's been no peer reviewed studies to my knowledge that equated sign ed with fidelity. And I think when you get past a point, a certain point of the sign ed number or the distortion number, I think it becomes academic. And what I'm leaning towards is an amplifier that measures at 80 dB sign ed or higher. 
is excellent. It should be transparent as long as it maintains its frequency response under various load conditions and it's not, it's basically load invariant. As long as it does that and it can give you a relatively high sign out of 80 dB or higher, you shouldn't be making amplifier purchasing decisions on if a product has an extra 10 dB above that or an extra 3 dB above that without considering other factors like how much power that amplifier is capable of delivering, the signal to noise ratio, whether it's suitable to drive forum loads. I just think it's a mistake to chase Synad. And then just to give you some more clarity on this point, um, Back in my telecom days, I actually did listening tests in controlled booths, and I was trying to uh, analyze when you could hear a distortion. And I would basically talk into a phone, put on a high quality pair of headsets, and I would just yell as loud as I could until I saw the waveform clipping. And believe it or not, in, in many cases, if it was just a spontaneous clip, I didn't hear it and other people didn't hear it. And this was in a sound booth. So, but when the clipping was constant and it was persistent, then it started becoming more apparent. And I think there's, there's some merit to understanding that mechanism. Um, I would love to hear more studies on detectability of distortion on, and amplifier distortion. If you guys know of any sources, please include them down below. Give me some links or, you know, point me to a YouTube channel that, talks about it. I think this is a question that really uh, should be explored more. You know, I, I don't want to just belittle the fact that people are doing amplifier measurements. I think it's very important. I do them myself, but I also think it needs to be put into perspective that just because one amplifier has a few dB higher in cyanide, it's not automatically a better amplifier, nor is that even audible in real world listening tests. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And guys, I am going to be at the Audio Advice Live event this August 4th through 6th in Raleigh, North Carolina. So please register. I'm going to put some links down below. I want to meet you guys at the show, and I'm going to throw you a little ad here so you guys can get excited about this event. The premier audio and video experience in the United States this August 4th through the 6th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Audio Advice Live is going bigger, bolder, and louder. Audio Advice Live is the best place to learn about the latest trends in high-performance audio, home theater, two-channel, turntables, or headphones. Meet with the industry's top experts, brands, and influencers to hear all the latest and greatest gear live and in person. Register to attend now at audioadvice.live. All right, my friends, that is a wrap. I forgot to tell you to keep listening. So let me tell you, keep listening.